the X-Men are back, and we get to see how it all began. Hello there, everybody. I'm movie critic Nick Yakabuchi, as always, for RealScreenReviews.com. And I'm returning critic Greg Hill. And our next review is X-Men First Class, which opened in worldwide release on June the 3rd. And this film stars James McAvoy, Michael Fassbender, and Jennifer Lawrence. And this film comes to us from director Matthew Vaughn, the man that discovered uh, Daniel Craig in the brilliant movie uh, Layer Cake, and also brought us Kick-Ass from just last summer. He used to be producer to Guy Ritchie's director, and now takes up the reins of the X-Men franchise to see if he can reboot it for us. And, uh... Greg, off the bat, what did you think of the new X-Men movie? I really liked it. You know, I, watching it, uh, that was my thought, was X-Men has been revitalized after the last two films that they've made really haven't been all that great. I'll tell you what, I loved this movie. Now, when I say, when you say the last two, I'm assuming you're talking about the, the origin Wolverine story and X-Men 3D, because I yes. really liked X2. Yes, X okay. yes. I think X-Men Part 2 was fantastic, and I think this movie is almost as fantastic as that one, and I'll tell you right now, because this movie is not just a superhero movie, this movie is a real movie first that just happens to have superheroes in it. This movie deals with social classes and social structures, and the Nazi regime, and how that affects people, and Nazi survivors. I thought it was a wonderful tale. It was. It was a great mix, and I thought um, the whole story of seeing how it all began, and how you know all of these people who, in the movies that were prior were all enemies. Yes. And they all started out as, as friends, if you will. I thought and, this... Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and I thought the whole backdrop of this all happening during, you know, one of the most turbulent times in our history, the Cuban Missile Crisis, and the whole 60s era, I thought it was fantastic. I thought the 60s era thing worked from beginning to end. I can't say enough good things about this movie. I thought that lead actor James McAvoy, who really impressed me in Robert Redford's The Conspirator... He really reminds me of Patrick Stewart in many spots in this film, but in my opinion, the, the star-making performance is Michael Fassbender as the young Magneto or the young Eric. This man is worthy of an Oscar nomination, I think, for his portrayal as Magneto. He brings power to every scene, he brings drama to every scene, and he takes what could be a popcorn movie, and I think with his scenes, elevates it to the next level. I completely agree. Uh, he... he he owns the movie, if you will. I Absolutely. Mean, the whole movie, you know, you're waiting to see what he's going to do next, and he's just, he demands that from you. Did you see comparisons? I, I actually thought comparisons between Anakin Skywalker and Magneto, and I, and I think the reasons that I, I, I kind of felt is, you have sympathy for this character. He's not just a villain. You can see where he is coming from. You have sympathy from his origin story and where he's come from with the Nazis and what has happened to his family over time. It's hard to not feel for the man, even though he's not doing, or even though he's doing despicable things, it's hard not to side with him in such a way. It is, and uh, like you said, seeing his origins and what he's been through and where he's come from, and y you do, you have a lot of sympathy yeah. for him. I love the fact that they incorporated the previous X-Men movies like you touched base with into this one, there are, they, they make uh, actors that appeared in other other X-Men yes. movies, and there is a cameo, I'm not going to give anything away, there is a cameo of, of, a, of a certain character that appears, and they say like three words, and in my opinion it was the best scene in the yeah, entire film. I know and I'm talking about it, I completely agree. Yeah, I don't want to give anything away, but it was absolutely fantastic. Well, Greg, I'm going to say, how many stars you get? It's got to be something good. What are you going to It is very good, you know, and even, you know, sitting in the theater and then thinking about it more, it's like you, you like it more than you realize. Yes. And uh, I gave this movie three and a half stars, exactly what the summer movie season needed at this uh, point. I can't agree with you more. However, I'm actually going to up the ante a little bit and say, I'm giving this four out of four stars. I think this is exactly what the summer movie season needed. I think this, as I talked about it, I think I realized just how much I really enjoyed this movie. And I'm glad that... Fast Five isn't the best movie that I've seen this summer. I'm glad that something has come around that really is worthy of... I, I, I think there are Oscar-worthy performances. I think Kevin Bacon is fantastic. I think Michael Fassbender is fantastic. There's Oscar-caliber acting going on in this film, and it's a summer popcorn movie. I, I say four stars. I say don't miss it. And there's another aspect that I completely forgot about. You know, watching the movie, Kevin Bacon is a very credible oh, my villain God. in this yes, movie. Absolutely. I've never seen him in that... In that uh, kind of role before, but no. he really took it on and he did a great job. No, I, I agree, and uh, the whole 1960s, everything fit his personality, fit his character. He was a wonderful addition to this X-Men franchise. I can't say enough good things about it. Well, Greg, I think we can't give it any more higher recommendation than three and a half and four stars out of four stars, so I think we'll wrap it up. I'll say thank you so much for being here. Well, thank you for having me, as always. Do you want to end it? And remember, people, we're not always right, but only when it comes to the movies. And thank you for your attention.